and you have to complete the season, says Greg Dyke. And Nathan, we may go straight into this story on the back of it because there's clearly a lot of vested interests at play here. Karen Brady, mm. the, the one and the strongest voice really to kind of step out of line and say, no, nah, we should actually just wrap things up or just void everything, I should say, for this season, which is obviously convenient given West Ham United are in a bit of relegation trouble. Like, you've got Greg Dyke, you've got um, his successor, Greg Clark, saying that he's going to tell clubs that he believes it will be unfeasible to finish the season. So not a, you don't just have Karen Brady saying this, you do have someone like Greg Clark saying this might not actually happen, getting this whole thing finished. It, it may well be unfeasible to finish the season because we don't know how long this is going to last. And if we get deep into the summer, when are you going to finish the season? And for Greg Dyke saying you must finish the season, I think it's way too early to say you've got to do anything right now. We just don't know where we're going to be in a month, in two months' time. So the Premier League, it seems, are going to make a decision this week and any decision that goes with continuing to play or intending to play games behind closed doors, like they're going to have to come back to that, you'd imagine, in times to come. And this idea of playing behind closed doors seems to ignore, and it touches on what Rain Rooney said yesterday, seems to ignore the fact that, firstly, as we've seen from Spain, that this disease can affect anybody that it can affect players, it can affect their family members, that they're just going to turn up 11 v 11 and rock on and play the game for our entertainment and deal with the consequences as if it's somehow going to affect them slightly differently. Like That's just not going to happen. And also, and this was shown in the PGA Tour where they intended to play on behind closed doors, it's not just 11 v 11. You've got management, backroom staff, and from a broadcaster's point of view, I'm sure dozens upon dozens of people. So suddenly you're very quickly into 100, 150 people into a stadium and suddenly you're into a mass gathering again where people can't stay that far apart. So to suggest we can just go back, I think, in two months' time playing these games behind closed doors, I just don't think it's a runner at all. The one possibility that the Premier League could go and the Champions League is, I would imagine, uh, something that maybe the Premier League might think about as well, of running it off over four or five days whenever you can. So do you look at the league table and there's so many politics involved in all this and you talk about Karen Brady. Like when Karen Brady talks about voiding the season, does she intend to give Sky back the 120 million that they got mm. in the broadcasting rights? Absolutely not. They intend to keep all the money for the season and make sure they're getting it again next season. I've seen a 22 team league proposed where Leeds and West Brom will come in that there's no relegation. Like all, Everything is going to be on the table over the next while. The most obvious pressing issue is what they do with Liverpool and whether they give them the title. <laughs> right now, it sort of feels irrelevant. It feels like the sort of age of banter is going to be put on pause for a yeah. little while. And a lot of what has been spoken about with Liverpool is the sort of banter side of things of Manchester United, Manchester City supporters. Can they sort of get one over on Liverpool? I, in one way, it feels like it doesn't really matter. If you put a giant asterisk, I think everybody's going to remember and recognise that Liverpool should have won the title. They're 25 points clear. It's not like at this stage they're going to win the title the way they want to, which is in front of a, a packed house like they might have this weekend against Crystal Palace. It's not like they're going to have that open top parade anytime soon. But there's no question they are the champions. And like, could you look at a situation where you look down the league and say, all right, Liverpool are champions, Manchester City and Leicester City get into Europe next season. And then it's very tight below that. And you have a six-team tournament to get the final Champions League spot. And maybe if some sort of an A-team tournament for relegation, you see the the relegate the teams in the bottom half, they all will want it to be null and void and just rock on next season and keep things going. So there's probably what's there is no right thing to do at the moment, but I, I could definitely see a situation. I'd say the most likely scenario right now is that they just void the season. I wonder is there a possibility, or I, I don't wonder. I think it's definitely going to be the case if football comes back in the next couple of months, that it just becomes a hierarchy of which has the most money associated with it. So mm. Champions League has got the most money going around for it. So that will be the first in line to get its little mini tournament sorted. So you'll get rid of two-legged ties. You'll just have them played off in a sort of March Madness type thing in the middle of the summer, potentially, as I say, if football comes back. Then the next thing down the, the, the line will be the Premier League finishing it up, or at least finishing it to the point where Liverpool are clear winners and have it mathematically wrapped up. And then you kind of go down the rung as well, where the FA Cup will probably just be scrapped entirely. And then you kind of have this in international window. like that. Like, I would be astonished at this point if it is not Euro 2021. There can't be any feasible way how Euro 2020 goes ahead in this climate. 
Uh, no, there's absolutely no chance, uh, particularly because that it's in 12 different countries and the sheer amount of travelling that's that's going to take place. So, yeah, you're right. It will be a hierarchy and it's a similar situation uh, going back to golf in that it looks as though all four majors are probably going to be postponed. Are they going to be just that asterisk, which, again, I wouldn't have a big issue with, or does money talk? And actually, when golf hopefully returns, say, August, September, do you have four majors in the space of six weeks because that's mm. where the most money is? So it'll be a similar situation. The Champions League will definitely take precedence. But how long can you go on for? So if you have the Champions League and you're going to have three or four games in the space of four or five days, there's a week gone. Yeah. If the Premier League, a lot of the teams still have, what, nine, ten games left? At a minimum, that's going to take five weeks to run off. Like Next thing you're into next September. Now, Wayne Rooney touched on it. Maybe you just reshape the calendar in the build-up to the 2022 World Cup and you use this opportunity now to do that. And I'd imagine nothing is really off the table at the moment. But it, 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 right now, it really doesn't seem feasible to play off the final 10 games of the Premier League season. And if that's the case, how can you relegate any teams? Mm. And if you're not going to have relegation, can you have a champion? As you say, it's a small change in comparison to everything else that's going on. But like one of the things that will be of major interest to Irish football fans is who will be managing the team going into next year. And it's something that Eamon Sweeney is writing about in the Irish Independent this morning. He's making the point that it's just time to bring Stephen Kenny in right now. It's kind of like tough luck. Just let, if there is a, a new football season from, say, August, September this year, just let Stephen Kenny be the manager, even if that requires going into the same European campaign. I, I wouldn't agree with that. Like, I think saying tough luck to anybody about anything right now isn't really the attitude that people need to have. Uh, Mick McCarthy has a job to do, which is to bring the sides to the European Championship final. And I think he should be given the chance to see that out. We're pressing pause on football at the moment. We can't just say that the football is stopping, but everything else will continue. Mm. So Mick McCarthy should 100% be given the playoffs. And if it doesn't go right, well, Stephen Kenny will come in straight away. We, again, tomorrow, maybe we'll find out a bit more about when they intend to play these playoffs. But if Mick McCarthy qualifies and gets through against Slovakia and Bosnia or Northern Ireland, to take that away and say, well, actually, your contract's up, tough luck because of this once-in-a-generation situation we've found ourselves in, I, I would say is, is totally unfair. And listen, I'm very much on the Stephen Kenny bandwagon and would love to see him in as soon as possible. But I think you've got to do the right thing. You can't say, let's do the right thing in all aspects of life and all aspects of society, except for the little bits we don't like and take a little shortcut here. The FAI are going to find themselves in that difficult situation. Stephen Kenny's contract says, I think, the 1st of August uh, 2020 is when he starts the job. But lots of people have contracts right now that are going to have to be renegotiated in every single walk mm -hmm. of life. And to suggest that if Ireland qualify, that Mick McCarthy wouldn't be the manager, I just don't think is is right or fair. And I don't know what Stephen Kenny's attitude, like, he's looking at this, I'm sure, thinking my contract is, but also he very much lives in the real world and we'll see what is happening. And is he going to try and step in and force the issue if the Republic of Ireland qualify? Like, it's mixed team. This team, whether we like it or not, and quite often we don't like it, is Mick McCarthy's team. If he gets them to Euro 2021, as it'll probably be, he yeah. deserves to be the manager. I, th I think Mick, you just ha you have to let Mick follow this thing through. This is the entire gr agreement. The agreement wasn't really based on a date. It was based on the end point of, of an entire process. And I think you've got to let mm. him finish it out. You've got to let him see out the, the playoffs at the very least. Uh, just a couple of other things to wrap up on. Then, like Jack Anderson writing in the Irish Examiner this morning about the immunity of the Olympics, that there still has been no budging whatsoever. The Prime Minister of Japan has come out uh, and said, everything is fine, everything will be going ahead. Which is astonishing, really, because there is still a lot of loose ends to be tied up when it comes to Olympic qualification, not least what is happening right now in London with an Olympic qualifier event. You've got the likes of Kurt Walker going out to fight for his place in the Olympics today. And it comes back to the point that you make about you know, like Wayne Rooney and guinea pigs and all that sort of thing. If footballers are being sent out there uh, to play against one another, boxers going into a boxing ring, and you know we, we talk about the droplets being exchanged by human beings in regular conversation mm -hmm. being detrimental to everybody's health. The droplets being exchanged in a boxing ring, you can only imagine. It's I, I just can't get my head around the fact that this is going ahead. Like even in fairness to the Ireland boxing team, 
they cut tra short their own training camp in Italy because of this. Now, obviously, this is a, a continental pa and a global pandemic at this point. It's just beyond belief that this thing is happening. Like, you can't blame them for actually going forward and ensuring that their boxers are still in the competition because it is their one and only chance to qualify for the Olympic Games. But this is just this, this wide invincibility complex that the Olympics seems to have, which is ludicrous at this point. Well, it needs to be taken out of the sports people's hands and it needs to be taken out of the sports administrator's hands. But the problem is that the British government have decided to go down a very different path mm. to our government and governments around the world. And we may all pay the price for that, it feels. We saw what happened at Cheltenham last week. We saw what happened at Anfield, the amount of people coming together. We don't know what the outcome of that is going to be. And the fear is that, obviously, the British government have hung their people out to dry but because we're such close neighbours that we're going to feel the ramifications of that as well. But there's so many parts of what's going on across the water that are just so strange. You're watching television, British television, and I was watching um, Question Time on Thursday night, and like, they spoke about the coronavirus for four or five questions, and like, there just didn't seem to be a full awareness of the gravity of the situation that there was here. You like, flicked on Anton Deck's Saturday Night Takeaway, and there is a full audience of three or four hundred people. Anton Deck are starting the show with a hand sanitizer joke. Like, it, it just doesn't seem to have computed as to what is going on. And that obviously comes from, from the very top. And this attitude of, well, we're going to enjoy it while we can. And eventually when they press stop, then we'll take it seriously. And listen, maybe you do. Maybe that's what's happened in this country that ever since really Thursday morning when Leo Varadkar made that speech in Washington, the people have fully copped on to what's going on here and have taken it very, very seriously. But it's just the fact that I'm only what, three, four days on from that, that Britain has such a different, different attitude. And it's, it's a terrible, horrible position for the boxers to be put in, especially considering I don't think anyone believes that the Olympics are going to take place uh, as, as they're meant to perhaps later in the year. Obviously, in Asia, thankfully, it feels as though maybe they're moving on to a slightly different stage of this outbreak and they're starting to get some sort of containment. But how can you have an Olympic Games if this isn't contained in every single part of the world? If we aren't pretty much totally through this crisis, I don't think you can have an Olympic Games, and it certainly goes against the Olympic spirit, if you were to say, well, you know, we're mm. going to let in these 60 countries who have done things right and who have got on top of this pandemic but the other countries, tough luck, you're not coming. I don't think that's that's feasible. And there's sponsors, there's money. Maybe there's, there's probably many reasons why uh, the the Japanese feel they have to keep saying it's going to happen on, for as long as possible. But but deep down, they must know there's not a hope in hell it's going to happen. Well, like it's a good point that you make if things are actually in a very different scenario over there than they are here. Maybe the Japanese prime minister is the last person you need to be hearing from in this case because this is not a Japanese event. This is a global event. This is about the world. This is about where the epicenter of this pandemic is at the moment. And athletes who are in grave danger at the moment, really, by going into a boxing ring, for example, uh, to puck the heads off one another rather than a situation where maybe the, the location is going to be safe come August. Like that is the important thing. It is the safety of the athletes, where they are at at the moment, as opposed to how Japan is fixed at the moment, which, as you say, is getting a little bit better.